Hi, my name's Andy, I'm from Space to Breathe, and this is a session on creative presentations on Zoom. We run this as a training session for groups as well, which is a lot more expanded session. So if you're interested in that, do get in touch with us. But I want to just unpick some of the ideas that we deal with in the session and to explore different kind of elements of good practice that can hopefully uh, help you do the best you can in present presenting on Zoom. This is a changing kind of landscape, but over the past year, we've got used to the idea of Zoom as a way that we communicate online. At its peak in the UK in mid-May, 770,000 people were on Zoom every day. So this feels like a kind of key part of the future going forward as well. Obviously screen is a poor substitute for a real person. There's always the temptation to multitask when we're doing this. There can be struggles with energy and how you come across in terms of how you present. And then obviously this is the same screen we watch things like Netflix on. So we're probably not going to reach that level, but I want to suggest some elements of good communication that can help you. And particularly look at these five areas, preparation, rehearsal, posture, visuals, and learning styles. And this is part of our training that we do in partnership with Make It Click. So visit the website and you'll find out a lot more about that. But let's get started with presentation. And this is Make It Click, just so that you're aware of that. Do sign up uh, via our website, Space to Breathe is the center and use 800-6130 as your center number. But moving on, preparation is absolutely key. And when planning this session, to be honest, I spent more time thinking about all the things that happen before we present than the things that come afterwards. It's so vital to think about how we prepare well. So some things to think about as you're preparing for your presentation. Test your internet. There's very easy ways online to do a speed test for your internet. Find the best place. Make sure that your internet is working well. Work out the best browser for the format that you're on. Some webinar um, presenting um, elements of Zoom, for example, work better on Firefox or Chrome. I found Safari works well for Zoom calls. Practice and test your meeting with yourself and record it. So you can have a meeting on your own with yourself. And it's a great way to engage with just what you look like. Record the session, set up a new meeting, record from the start and just have a meeting with yourself and see what it looks like. So all those kind of dynamics around how things come across on the internet are vital. Think about sound. I'm using just Apple earphones that come with an iPhone. Uh, these are the old style ones, but they have a microphone built in and they sound much better than if you are just using your computer audio and speakers. Earbuds that you get with the new phones will work as well. But you could also think about microphones and different elements of sound that can help you. And when we come on to posture later, this will come more into play. But let me just show you a couple that I use. You can have a straightforward stand mic that will fit on a table stand and sit in front of you. And particularly when you're presenting with a lot of people, that can be quite helpful. Or you could use just a simple clip mic, something that clips to your lapel and that will pick up sound well. And that can go straight into the headphone port of your computer. But I've invested quite recently in a, a USB to a microphone cable, which helps me, sorry, just grabbing it here. So it has um, a female XLR on one end and a USB on the other, and will mean I can plug in a proper microphone. And that makes, can make all the difference when you're presenting well, how things come across and how things sound. And if you're doing this a lot, it's worth thinking about that and investing in that. Here's just two options I want to give you, but there are plenty of others. The Shure MV5 digital condenser microphone is a fantastic kind of mid-range option. It's about 80 pounds online, and it will be great at capturing sound and making giving you a professional feel. But then also uh, the La Lavalier microphone, the clip mic is the one I've used, and that's for 10 pounds. That really does make quite a big difference, both 
in Zoom presentation and recording. There's some kind of other elements that it's worth thinking about when you're presenting as well. Think about your background. Think about what things are behind you. If I just stop for a moment now and say, what do you notice? I suspect 90% of you have said the hat. So things in the background make a difference. You might also have noticed that I've left in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen a few kind of bits of clutter around. You might be drawn to the lights or to the plant, but think about what's behind you. Draw attention to your face. And it's worth, I think, interacting between slides and faces I'm trying to do here because it gives you a sense of human contact. Think about interruptions. What are the things that are going to interrupt you? And how do you negate them? And then think about lighting. Think about how to light what you're presenting and doing. Zoom have an excellent page around lighting options on their help section of the website. And on the, the, uh, the blog piece that you've probably found this video through, there's a link there. But if not, have a look at the Zoom help section. But essentially you want light to be behind your screen. So my screen is currently facing towards a window and the light is coming on me and I'm also lit with a spotlight to the side. I have to be slightly aware of my glasses and reflection on my glasses. If I put all light behind me and nothing in front of me, I would look very dark. So think about where you put light and in behind the screen in front of you rather than the other way around. You notice I started with a slide. Thinking about a holding slide as people arrive is worth doing. So that's kind of all around preparation. And next I want to kind of think a little bit about rehearsals. And I would say on Zoom calls, rehearsals count. Now I've had some training in public speaking and I had a certain style when I would stand in front of people about how I presented my notes so I was able to go along, how I ran a session, the kind of things that I would do. I've changed some dynamics of that now I'm presenting online. So I would have in the past gone for more general notes. I'm now not going as far as a script, but I've got much more detail and I'm thinking about the words and the things I'm saying. I like this uh, three-way kind of view of presenting online, that they're structured, succinct and visual. And I found rehearsal is the only way to really get that down. So again, start a, a meeting just with you, press record, and have a go, rehearse, practice, and then watch it back and see what it looks like and try and improve it. Think about your tone of voice and how it comes across. Think about pauses. Think about how to start. I must admit, I quite like to start gently and to make sure everybody's comfortable in the space, that they can orientate themselves around Zoom and they know where they're going. But some people like to start with a bang, with a question, with an image or a prop. You may gain interest from the start then and hold people with you. You can do a mix of those two approaches that I've suggested. Mentioning props will come onto visuals in a little while, but another piece of preparation and rehearsal that I do is to prepare myself. So I will have a little exercise before I do a presentation where I will stand up and I will stretch tall and I will stretch myself out and I will become aware of my body and myself and I might stretch my voice. And I'd also will try and have a moment of calm. All these things can help me. I've learned over time in rehearsing that sometimes my voice can go for a prolonged amount of talking. and so. Having water with me is something I've learned from rehearsing. So take time to practice. And I think the investment in all that stuff before the cameras go on will really help you when you do. But then when you do, how do you present? And what is the best way for you to do that? Over time, I've begun to be more in tune with the ideas of standing. And let me explain this. In a workshop or a more informal setting, I will often sit because it feels like I would sit if I was in a group. 
that when I'm presenting something and some content, I'm finding I'm standing more. This is my Angelou, stand up, know who you are, tower over your circumstances. I like that, but I, I like what it brings to this conversation because it does change what happens when you stand. John Nicholson from Market Trade says, standing instantly puts you in presentation mode. And Caroline Goida, when she's talked about Zoom presentation, talks about unchaining the chair. So some of that is about having your notes in the right place. If you are sitting, sitting well, you notice that I've had to do a couple of adjustments in this video and it can be distracting. Fluctuate the format, heighten your humanity and your energy, but standing may well help you with that, particularly if you've been used to standing in the past. I want to show you a little video of what that can look like. So this just gives you a sense of what's possible standing up. You can see immediately I'm a bit more freed up. I quite like to communicate in a demonstrative kind of way. So this gives me more freedom. There's also a little bit more energy. I can work on a background that helps, or I could even have something here like a flip chart to convey ideas or a poster with, with something that I'm trying to communicate. What you can't see is I've got a stand here so that I've got my notes, I can quickly look down if I need to, but I could also position them behind the screen. And I'll also bring up in a moment a still of how my computer's set up so that I'm nearer at head height. So I think it's quite important that how you think about projecting yourself within the image. And so ideally you want to have the webcam as high as possible towards your face. So it just gives you an idea of what's possible and we can talk about that some more. So there we go. And I think it's worth saying and um, that I was using a clip mic there and uh, probably like maybe a meter away from my computer. So one of the ways you can handle slides and things like that in that scenario is to have a dummy participant in the call, which is another iMac with or an iPad or something like that with your sound muted, but where you can just move slides along easily or to have a little clicker to go with your slides. But this is was this, the way that my computer was set up that I mentioned. It's elevated so that I'm the camera, which is at the top of the screen is much more at eye level. So how do we create something that feels exciting to see? And here we move on to visuals. What is it that engages you in a presentation and how do we use visuals? Forbes talk about fun, engaging, valuable and interesting. And I think these are four great words that it's got to be enjoyable that the visuals engage you, take you in, that they have value and interest you. And this doesn't just have to be slides. We found that props can become a valuable ally in Zoom presentations. This is one that we've made that we've used a great deal. A kiln a jar with some water and some glitter and it's made a snow globe. And we've used it to talk about the pandemic and lockdown that it felt like we were being shaken up every day. And then every day, patterns would begin to form and it would settle down and we'd know where we are a little bit more and then we get shaken up again. It's just a prop that can help us. So what else can help with presenting? Presenting things that are fun, engaging, valuable and interesting. Well, obviously making <coughs> an impact with words it's a word that makes an impact. But we're often drawn to big text, to big statements, to clear focuses of our attention. So have a think about ways that those visuals can bring the content alive that you want. Think about your background. I will normally use black now in Zoom calls. I find white on black is generally easiest for people to see, think about images rather than words. I try to have no more than 12 words on a slide. Think about embedding music into your presentation. Think about, I use charts and graphs 
using contrast to help bring ideas out. I'm indebted to David J.P. Phillips for many of his ideas. And there's a video again on the page with uh, this kind of like element of uh, a content on the creating creative presentations page on our website, which links to his YouTube talk about death by PowerPoint. And I'd recommend that. But he gives five ideas, one message per slide. Don't speak over text. So if I now share this one word that has cultural kind of impact, but I talk over it, you're not listening to me. Or if you're listening to me, you're not focusing on the words. Think about things like moving images, things that draw attention. I want to pull out a slide that I used earlier to give you an idea of that. The start, we had a, a menu of what we were gonna look at and you'll notice that I used a smaller headline and bigger words. Usually our PowerPoint slides are structured in completely different ways with bigger headlines and smaller words. That draws us to the headlines, not to the content. So instead here, I'm trying to draw you to the content. I mentioned about contrast, five lives on a graph. You want people to see one, well then use a different color or contrast. And think about how people are drawn to what you're presenting. David J. Phillips says, remember what PowerPoint was for. It was to aid your presentation, not to be the presentation. And there are a number of different kind of uh, models and ideas and platforms that you can use that can help you as well. Remember, PowerPoint is not the only way. So Prezi, SlideDog, Visme. Use a digital whiteboard, Microsoft whiteboard, Miro. Group mind mapping, Lucidchart and Mindmaster are good ones. Polling, Poll Everywhere and Slido. And I'll put all the links to this on the creative presentations page on our website. But lastly, I want to think about learning styles. How do we learn when we are online? Well, we learn in the ways that we would learn in other formats as well. I like Kolb's learning cycle as one model. So there are different ways that we learn by feeling, by watching, by thinking, by doing, and there are different learners within that. A reflector, feeling and watching, taking in. A theorist, beginning to watch and then think about why. A pragmatist, moving from thinking to doing, and then an activist, feeling and doing something. I try and make sure that all my presentations meet those four groups and those four ideas in some way. So give a reflector time, provide the notes afterwards, allow them to go back and go into it. Give a thinker a way to engage, offering a follow-up conversation, what will happen next. Give someone who's a doer the ability to actually do something off the back of it, tasks in the session, but also what next. I've also been really influenced by Daniel Kahneman and his book, Thinking Fast and Slow. He talks about two systems of learning that we have. System one, that intuitive learning that we do, like riding a bike or you know, learning how to swim. And then system two, when we focus, when deep learning taking place, takes place, and his example is when we're walking along in a, in a phone conversation, and then the phone conversation gets serious, and we might stop. So all of our attention is now on that phone conversation. We need to allow both the development of the intuitive, the testing of it, the trying of it. Why do I do those things? When I teach listening skills, often people have them intuitively. So you go back over and you say, well, that's why you're doing that. And then also those moments of depth, of focus, of concentration, where I think I'm learning something new here. I'm also a big believer in engaging the senses. So how can we use sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing, and what we're doing? Sight and touch, are, uh, sight and hearing rather, are probably the easiest ones on a Zoom call. Visuals, music, our voices. But smell, what are the things that you smell in a room? Engaging with a task that involves smell. Can you touch 
trying to explain something through the sense of touch, how a jar feels on your hands, a piece of bark that you may have asked participants to go and get hold of earlier. Taste is the hardest, but what about in using food as a presentation? Make yourself toast and honey before the session. Have a piece. Think about the sweetness of the taste. What does that say to you? And again, it's mixing it up, different methods, different approaches, keeping it human, keeping it engaging, fluctuating styles, approaching different learning outcomes. So I hope that's been really helpful. The key of preparation, of doing things before you get in front of the camera, the necessity to practice and rehearse, all those kind of different dynamics that you will learn about what things sound like and how, how things look. The idea of posture, how am I going to present? And then thinking about visuals and learning styles in the way that we do. There's more on our website and we would love you to sign up to make it click and connect with us and we'll offer you some further support. So visit those pages too. And again, that's all on the web page that supports this piece of learning. Hope it's really helpful and we'll be in touch soon. Take care. Bye-bye.